the uh, hospital has just grown to the point where we needed to expand a number of the ancillary departments. The uh, existing departments were just bulging at the seams, so to speak, and we just had to expand. It's fun to watch an adult shy away from a simple blood test. But when it's happening to a child, it's no laughing matter. The one ounce. Ouch! There. And that's going to be all. To most children, needles are truly frightening. And unfortunately, in a child's imagination, they're just one of many unfriendly creatures to be found in a hospital. The fears aren't something kids outgrow. In fact, normally they grow larger. So it's important to deal with them now. Face to face. Just stand right up here on this little platform, put your chest right up against there and hug it just like your boyfriend. You need to look straight. Uh, Amanda's showing her fellow first graders that you can make friends with the staff, even the equipment of a hospital. All it takes is a little introduction. And that's where Children's Memorial Hospital comes in. Once a month, they open their doors to local first grade classes to let them know firsthand that the hospital isn't such a scary place after all. It's been a very positive experience for the children. We've had some uh, remarkable types of comments made by teachers who've been first grade teachers for 20, 30 years who felt that this was one of the most beneficial field trips that they had ever taken. And what he's looking at are these two little bumps right back there. Now, Today's the lesson is one most kids can relate to. Amanda's going to take a trip to the operating room for a tonsillectomy. You'd think the strange machinery, the foreign sounds, and the IV tubes would frighten children coming into the operating room. Actually, it's that mask that covers that unknown face that scares them. I wear a mask, and you're going to get to wear one too. This mask is kind of different that you're going to wear. It has a special gas in it that's going to make you real sleepy. And you go to sleep so that nothing we do will hurt. The next thing you know, you'll be back in your room, okay? I want you to take good care of yourself at home now and help mom and dad remember to call me in a couple of days and tell me how you're doing. Okay? Mom By the dad, end of this program, these first graders appear to have mastered the art of relaxing in a hospital, even to the point of eagerness to follow the doctor's orders. But then again, what child wouldn't when the prescription calls for lots of yummy ice cream? Sherry Sellers, Action 4 at Children's Memorial Hospital. There was only one port person in the airplane, although the initial reports were that there were two. Did the tower have any radio contact? There were, it, the pilot had no radio contact with Wiley Post Tower. Was he on takeoff or attempt? No, he, they had no knowledge of him being in this area. The term tax is an all-encompassing word. There are federal taxes, state taxes, property taxes, sales taxes, and the list goes on and on. What many people don't realize is that some taxes are tax deductible. That's right, keep track of money spent on taxes this year, and you may be able to qualify for a special deduction on next year's returns. Not all taxes will be tax deductible. Your federal tax, social security tax, and any gift taxes paid will not come off the following year's return. Tax expert Marshall Snipes has a list of taxes that are deductible. Examples of uh, some of those taxes that are deductible would be 
personal property tax on your house, uh, real property tax on your house, uh, a portion of your car tax is tax deductible, your state income tax is deductible in the year that you paid it, and any state and local sales tax. Keep in mind that any penalties or special interest paid on delinquent taxes will not be deductible. Also, what may be a great deduction for one person might not be a good move for another. Check with a tax consultant before actually taking a deduction that you are unsure of. With Tax 883, Kurt Autry, Action 4. It was a cold night at the Holy City as the familiar scenes unfolded as they have for nearly 40 years now. The crowd that cluttered the hillside overlooking the Gate of Jerusalem, the Temple and Pilate's Court was smaller than the crowds that have cluttered that hillside in the past, watching the spectacle below. A steady stream of the onlookers packed their belongings, forced home by the cold before the Easter pageant was half over. It was a quieter crowd too. No onlookers pressed their way onto the playing area or disrupted the performance, as one guard says happened last year, the year some people tried to block the Easter celebration from the Federal Wildlife Refuge. Instead, they snuggled against the cold and watched and waited. These are the faithful, the ones who have come before and who will probably come again. Well, this is the seventh uh, consecutive year that I've come. It's a very inspirational service, and uh, I uh, uh, find it well worth the trip. from North Carolina to see it. My daughter lives here. Why, why did you come? Is this the first time you've come? Or? We were here two years ago and it rained and we didn't get to see it. So we decided to come back this year. Have you enjoyed it? Very much. And I love that old My God. Why? Why has thou forsaken me. For most of them, the vigil lasted all night. For some, it was a curiosity. For others, an inspiration. For all, the end of the Easter story and the dawning of the Easter day. Charles Schnitzer, Action 4, at the Holy City. On your next trip to the supermarket, take note of the prices in the produce and dairy product section. According to a recent survey, food prices dropped one half of one percent in the month of March. Vegetables, milk and eggs saw the most dramatic decline, with food staples like flour and sugar right behind. When food prices drop like this, government economists can usually come up with a million reasons for the turnaround. But one local grocer says he doesn't need a PhD to explain lower food prices and it doesn't have anything to do with a gross national product or the consumer price index. He says it's a simple matter of seasons. Prices usually go down when the weather gets warmer because we usually get a lot of produce and stuff around locally. 
uh, watermelons, tomatoes, stuff like that that's grown here in Oklahoma. Of course, out in California with the bad drought and stuff they had, the prices are going to be pretty high. The food cycle doesn't end with fresh vegetables and dairy products. When the local corn harvest comes in, local farmers can feed their livestock with it. The local corn lowers the local farmer's overhead. This way he can pass the savings on to you, the consumer. In coming months, expect to see more cuts in vegetables, fresh fruit, pork, and some cuts of beef. One half of one percent will be about $1.98 on this woman's shopping bill. Not exactly a savings bonanza. But the decline in food prices is a step in the right direction. And if tradition holds, the cut should continue on into the summer months. At the market, Kurt Autry, Action 4. Public. It was a favorite of Martin Luther King Jr. His life reflected the lyrics in the hymn, a courageous fight for justice. Tonight, 15 years after he fell victim to an assassin's bullet, he was remembered and praised. But many believe the fight King led for equality isn't over. The influence that he had is almost gone now. It, it, we're losing a lot of that. Uh, this is why we're doing programs like Martin and all too not rekindle some of the bad, hard feelings, but to let America know that uh, we haven't come as far as we should have. Those days when I feel like that uh, I want to strike back, I, I understand that the only intelligent way to conquer problems is to do it from a peaceful manner. Um, he helps me be an example to young people, which is a great concern to me, knowing that there still is a, a person out there that can be a Martin Luther King. Good morning, teachers and students. Would you please stand for the thought for the day and the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? Andrea Jackson will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. May we make the same allowances for others as we would want them to make for us. Each school day at Deer Creek Elementary I starts like this. The, the reading of what school officials call a thought for the day and the Pledge of Allegiance. Recently, some parents of children enrolled in the Deer Creek system became concerned with what they called a morning prayer session, a breach of the law. The Deer Creek superintendent changed it to a thought for the day with no reference to a supreme being and no amen at the end of it. He believes the school has the right to motivate students. I would like for them to take a look at the statements that, that we would use for thought for the day. They're simple statements like, uh, help me do the best that I can in all that I do today. And it's not addressed to anybody. It's not, there's no uh, amen. Uh, it is just a thought to motivate the students to try to make them uh, get in the right frame of mind to start the school day. I, I would challenge the fact that we can use motivational statements uh, with, uh, with students. But the thought for the day concept leaves questions with parents Tom Brown and Patty McConless, who both have children in the Deer Creek school system and object to prayer in school. The thought that they were following the, the wishes of a majority of the parents and my response to him was that the majority had nothing to do in this, that we might be a minority of two or a minority of one, but that the law of the land was designed to protect those minorities and that was what we were trying to achieve. If he's calling this a thought for the day, I just have misgivings about that. 
We haven't made any firm decision as to whether we would litigate this or not litigate it. It's our firm hope that the school board will simply stop the practice and that will be the end of it. Brown is meeting with school officials this evening to try and iron out their differences. Kevin Ogle, Action 4 in Deer Creek. So if you wish to speak, be sure and sign in. These people came to the Corporation Commission this evening to plead their case. They're Southwestern Bell ratepayers, and the majority of them don't like the idea of paying more for their phone service. Southwestern Bell representatives tried to explain their reasoning for the request. Greatest bargain in the world. For that kind of money, you get unlimited incoming But calls. most people weren't listening. If their net profit is cut by 50% in 1983, their net profit for 1983 will still be in excess of $420 million. Frankly, if the service they're giving to the, to the rest of the people in this building are equivalent to what they're giving to me, I'm amazed that they can stay in business. It's whether do we heat, do we eat, do we have communication. And there's a lot that's going to have to do away with that communication when they, if this, these rate increases are put in. The unemployed and the retired hear you loud and clear when you say you want more profit. We'd like to increase our profit also, but we don't have a chance. We own fixed incomes. We that are unemployed haven't got a chance. When it gets rough for us, sir, what we do is just slice the bacon a little thinner. We even slice our bologna, who we've been hearing pretty thin, and we pass it around. If approved, basic monthly residential rates will be increased by as much as $6.60, and some business rates will go up $19 per month. Kevin Ogle. Action four. <laughs> Even though a freak accident did this damage to the Rainbow Hill apartment complex last night, the residents inside were taken to safety before the explosion occurred, which would have left them stranded inside the burning structure. Thanks to some quick thinking by the apartment manager and advice from the Oklahoma City Fire Department, all of the 23 handicapped residents are safe today. Ironically, just two weeks ago, fire marshal assistants instructed management personnel on the correct evacuation procedure, and it paid off last night. It makes you feel good that your job has really uh, accomplished something. The building was new and had all the latest safety features, including sprinklers and fire alarms. But the nature of the explosion and subsequent fire eliminated the usefulness of such equipment. All of the responsibility rested upon human response. The building was constructed by United Cerebral Palsy, a group the fire department has trained for years for just such an emergency. Excellent job. They really do. They, they're totally safety conscious with their people. And uh, they call us, uh, well, we give them three classes a year ourselves. And then they have classes on their own. And we have a very good relationship with them. Even though none of the occupants were physically injured, some emotional pain showed today as one resident came back to observe the damage in what was left of his home. Handicap shelter safety requirements and knowledge of emergency procedures are strictly enforced by the Oklahoma City Fire Department. And department officials hope last night's incident will serve as a reminder as to the importance of those requirements. Kevin Ogle, Action 4. Uh, the job market is really tightened up. Uh, there are, as far as students holding the jobs, a lot of them aren't there anymore. A lot of high school students that worked last summer, uh, anticipated work this summer, it'll be a lot harder to find.
Sonny Hayes has been on Oklahoma's death row for five years, awaiting execution for the murder of a Muskogee shoe repairman. Hayes came within a week of being executed in 1981, but a federal judge stopped the scheduled execution and ordered the convicted killer to Eastern State Hospital for psychiatric treatment. Doctors there say Hayes is now cured. But Hayes' court-appointed attorneys disagree. They claim their client is still insane. They plan to appeal his death sentence tomorrow. However, Action 4 has learned that Hayes wants to die as scheduled. The killer has reportedly hired a Muskogee attorney to fight for his right to be executed April 29th. In the meantime, the Corrections Department is proceeding with its execution plans. Sonny Hayes will remain on death row until he's transferred to a special execution cell. Hayes will remain in that cell until his execution is either carried out or postponed once again. Scott Wallace, Action 4. schools is a tremendous idea. However, if Canyon North and Ski Island are shifted to Wiley Post, and if, as anticipated, a section of Wiley Post is shifted to Kirkland, which is several miles away, aren't we destroying this concept that we all agree is so good? Seven-year-old Alex Fuller died after a year-long bout with a brain tumor and radiation therapy. His family describes that year as the most difficult and yet the most wonderful year of their lives. You have really only two roads to travel. You can throw your hands up in the air and give up and be devastated. Or you can go on and make the best and the most of an awful situation. And then you have wonderful memories to look back on and not a lot of regrets. We didn't waste one minute being miserable. A year has passed since Alex died, and the Fullers say they have resumed a normal family routine, a routine that was shattered during Alex's illness. We were home some, but we were really more in the hospital for seven months off. Uh, Amy and Adam each went to a different home of friends. Sit, biscuit. Sit, sit. All of the energy and attention was on Alex. Child psychologist Susan Lewis explains that when a child becomes sick, all the attention that was previously spread around to all the children and between husband and wife suddenly is focused on the ill child. It throws everything out of kilter, the entire balance of the family, to have a child diagnosed with a life-threatening illness. And so they have to sort of recoup. Everybody has to reestablish their roles in light of this, this new um, difficulty. In spite of open discussions with his parents when he saw them, Alex's older brother Adam says the changes were scary to him. Because you couldn't see your family. It was like they had run away and they had left you, but they didn't. It was like, you know, but I sure ain't felt like that, and my dad felt like that, and Alex felt like that. Pediatric social worker Siegfried Coyle says with parents being pulled in so many directions, siblings sometimes get lost in the shuffle. Sometimes feel very angry and guilty. That combination, why did it happen to Joey and not to me? And then he's getting more attention than I am and that's not fair. Janan remembers well an afternoon shopping just a few weeks before Alex died. And Amy was complaining about something, why don't you do such and such, you do such and such for Alex and so forth. And I just looked at her and I said, Amy, you know, I will probably grow old with you. And I'm not going to have that many days probably with Alex. And it was like she understood. I always wonder why they didn't spend time with me. But 
he had to get some attention because he was sick. So I, I could understand. Soon there was relief from the emotional strain. As the time grew near, a decision was made that Alex would die at home with his family nearby. At the very end, uh, just a few days before he died, he said, Mama, I'm tired of struggling and fighting. We were sort of mostly in the room, all of us, and I stayed in there almost constantly. But Adam came into the room just a few minutes after Alex died, and he leaned over. I was sitting on the side of the bed kind of at the end, and he leaned over to me and, and just looked up at me and said, Relief. And I said, Yes, Adam, relief. Relief for Alex and relief for you and for me and for all of us. And it's okay to feel that. We have wonderful memories to look back on and not a lot of regrets. Sherry Sellers, Action 4 for Medical Matters. Well, there are some exemptions in the law now, and uh, our office has full details for people that want to contact us and, uh, to see if they're eligible for, for an exemption. But there are an awful lot of senior citizens who have saved diligently and who are seeing the, the interest on that savings depleted by the withholding provisions and will not be eligible for an exemption. Almost 80 percent of the state's prospective teachers are passing their competency exams. That's good news because without a passing grade they can't become licensed teachers. The problem is fewer people in Oklahoma are choosing teaching as a profession and the result is a shortage of teachers in some areas. One of the largest employers of teachers in the state is the Oklahoma City Public School System and this year they're projecting more than a hundred teacher openings. What we have done in the past in order to remove those shortages is to advertise in out-of-state papers in Michigan and other places where uh, apparently people would like to move out of the north and come down to the Sun Belt. As far as math and science teachers, uh, we've always had a shortage of math and science teachers and we've really had to, to advertise and to uh, get out and recruit in order to, uh, to get those kinds of positions. Smith says the school system projects shortages not only in math and science, but also in industrial arts and homemaking. He says without enough properly trained teachers, they will be forced to put more students in each class. Debbie Mash, Action 4. I'm calling upon the legislature to give the, gov the governor standby authority for mandatory furloughs and reductions in force if that is necessary after appropriate cuts and reductions are made wherever we can in state government. It would be across the board. It would concern every state agency. It would be called upon to be voluntary of the elected officials that they would participate and would ask that all the members of boards and commissions would forego uh, any claim that they might have for per diem at that same time. In other words, try to be as fair as possible if we ever reach the point where there was the need of a furlough. Understand that regardless of what we do now, we still may have problems in the fiscal year next year because we're budgeting so tightly. Uh, that incidentally, following our discussion this morning, will be introduced in the legislature, co-authored by the leadership of the House and the Senate, particularly by 